Hello, it's another Fringe Ride Along with uh, me, Barry. Hiya, alright. Um, my guest has just freshly stepped out of the Black Diamond FM studio. We've just done a, a, a couple of hours show yeah, together. It was good. It was, it was, a, it was a gig. I, I nearly died. That's how, that's how dramatic it was. It was it was quite dramatic. Yeah. Um, he didn't. And um, what I've done today is I've put a 32 gigabyte storage card in this phone. Patrick Monaghan. Let it go. Oh, sorry, I'll let it go, sorry. 43 minutes! <laughs> anyway, yes. I'm getting angry again. No, no yeah, I'm kidding. Yeah, yeah. I'm getting, remember, my... remember the breathing exercises? Proper chi. There we go. My guest is the star of the last few years of the Edinburgh Fringe, a proper star. 10 films with my dad, 11 films to happiness, the year of the goat, and this year, the joys of retail and Mr. Blue Sky, it's Mr. Aidan Goatley. Hello. Aidan Goatley. How yeah. you doing? I'm fine, I'm good. Did you I'm enjoy good. that? Radio I really enjoyed it. It was, it was lots of fun. I love doing radio. Um, always love doing radio. And um, it was just lots of fun because you just come up with stuff, thing. Yeah, yeah. And the, the hour tune stuff uh, was particularly amazing. I, was, I, I did that, enjoy that. that I was, was very impressive. Was very that, was, that was quite great. I think we great. may separate that bit. From just just put yeah. and, and put that online just <laughs> on its own. You have to listen to the show. Um, mixcloud.com forward slash bastard one nine six nine and you'll be able to hear what we're actually discussing. Yeah. Um now the fringe right, right along, I've had a few guests so far and Aidan was one of them with his awesome Star Wars t shirt. Have to say, have to say. So and the car's making a funny noise. That car yeah. does that. I don't know why it, it sounds does like that. someone's farting. Yeah. Are you sure it's the car or, or not? I think maybe Princess Pumplot's hiding. If you look yeah. if you look at the back, the back window. Yeah. Ah, ah, I won't explain it, yes. But there's a, there's a, just there, there's a Princess Pumpalot sign. Brilliant. Um, and you actually, you actually... Yeah, no, we have to... It's just, just, just there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, right, a couple of things we need to do beforehand. Um, okay. As I've said to all my other guests, no card journey is complete without some sweeties. Sweet, oh. Yes. There's something a little bit creepy about giving us a go, go, have some sweeties. <laughs> Uh, which is a little bit thing. Um, is it okay to swear on this one? Hi. Oh, okay. Thank fuck for that. Because um, honestly, I've <laughs> been on radio for two hours and and I almost swore three times. I didn't, but I almost. I did. never noticed. I, I genuinely did not notice that. It thing. was it was a, it was a close run thing. All trust right. me. Okay. Fair uh, enough. But, um, um, but yeah. yes, um, there may be some bad language in this one. It's all right. Grant Stott swore in this car, so I was like, I feel honoured then to be in, in the in the in the same company as as uh, in the yes. swearing chair. Yes. As that fucker. And, and me and Abby, Ab, me and Abby Roberts actually discussed something that Jeannie Godley taught it, taught Abby. By the way. Right. Hey. I'm so, sure Janie Godley has taught many swear words to many people. Hi. Uh, cool. So, um, I've yet to meet Janie Godley. Oh. I hope I do because... She's a legend. Um, there's been a few... Some, a couple of my guests have, have mentioned her and how good Janie is. She's a legend. She's fantastic. Yeah. She does a show. And she could... You know, she's on Radio 4. She's a huge comic. Mm -hmm. But she does her show for free because, you know, people will come and see her anyway. But the great thing about her show is, and she advertises us, she says no one should, like, be hard up. Everyone should be able to see comedy. Mm -hmm. So even if you can't afford to pay, because it's pay at the end, it's a bucket show. Yeah. And even if, if you've got no money or anything like that, you can take money out of the bucket and buy yourself some dinner. All right. How amazing is that? I, it is, but it's also kind of like, I, I wouldn't be comfortable doing that. That's because you're a bastard. Yeah, true story. Um, but the, the, the phrase Jeannie Godley has taught Abbey Roberts in mm. Scottish, Yeah. get the fuck. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so there you go. Yeah. Um, so I may contact Jeannie and say, "Can I have a word? Sit there. What's this about? Yeah. You know, bad language." So there may be some sweary words in here. They'll um, be very, very sweary. With which, Jeannie. if anybody who knows me will know that I, yes, I do. Now you sit back, you relax. I, I am. I am sit back and relax. Yes. I've, uh, I've we need to play a safety sweetie. message before we go. Just like okay. any terms and conditions, kind of thing, and and you know that kind of thing. Well, so the exits are here, here, and here. That kind of thing. No, so, okay. All right. Um, We're not going to sing. No, no, uh, no. Welcome to Fringe Ride Along. Please oh. make yourself comfortable while we go through some safety procedures. Number one, please fasten your seatbelt. Number two, please ensure all arms, heads, feet, and private parts are safely tucked away. Number three, in the event of an accident, the driver will run away, as this is a stolen vehicle, and as such, the driver will deny all knowledge of everything. Now, please. Press the arrow button 
and enjoy your trip. Cool. Yeah, I like it. So, arrow button. Nice. Press that. That one. Yeah. Oh, nice. Keep <laughs> sure about these things. It's good. Unfortunately, for copyright reasons, etc., etc., we can't play the whole song. You can only do 29 seconds. I can only do a snippet yeah. for artistic purposes. So, Aidan, thank you for yeah. coming along. Thank you. Um, first and foremost, oh, um, for the sweet. That's all right. Um, we we talk anyway. We've just spoke for two hours on radio, playing yeah. songs, talking about your show, and and whatnot. That was great fun. Yeah, I enjoyed it. I have to say, um, my eyes are sore. You know, when your eyes get sore from from laughing. Yep. Like they get watery and whatnot. That happened. It um, happened a couple of times. Oh. Um, so you're at the fringe at the Sweet Venues down the Grass Market Apex Hotel. I am indeed. Um, 7.35 for your 7, show. Yeah, Joys of Retail is on at 7.35. Yep. And then uh, my other show, Mr. Blue Sky, is on at 10.15. It's in the same room. Um, it's getting to the point where, because sort of, we're nearly coming up to the halfway point, I am sometimes forgetting which show I'm doing. Ah, okay. Uh, which can be quite interesting. Um, but uh, but yeah, it's been good. Brilliant. Um, now I've I've been reading sorry bits and pieces, obviously, of people who have been and people saying how how good it is. And there's there's been quite a few people have, have went onto Twitter and yeah. whatnot and and was saying how good it was. I went came to see Joys of Retail. Thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, what kind of reaction have you been getting from members of the the public? Are they are they? Um, are they coming to see you afterwards to have a chat? Yeah, they, they, people are lovely. They, I, I, I'm very lucky because I did the other show that I did for five years that you see, you know, 10 films with my dad and I get people who come to see me every year and that's 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 lovely that they do, that they trust me to come and spend some time with me. Um, but yeah, retail's been good. Re, uh, Blue Sky is, is going really well and um, retail's going very well as well. It's selling very well. I'm, I've, I've had some odd crowds for retail. I had, um, yeah, you. Me and Kenny. Um, you, you and your wife. Uh, very weird. Um, no. I had, uh, no, I had, I had a, a women's institute come along. Mm. It must have been a women's institute. They, they were about, average age was about 70, 75, and they sat in the front row and they just, just, it just brought down the whole, you know what I mean? The, the atmosphere there, they were so prim and proper. If you could, they were daily mail readers. You could see it. Do you know what I mean? And. Uh, they and uh, but I don't think anyone's capable of reading the Daily Mail. They just go, oh, burn them! Um, they're too angry. And um, wow, that's an amazing piece of architecture. Via that, yes. Viaduct. The um, we're we're just coming away from Newton Grange. There, there's actually a train goes across there. Wow, that's, the, a, um, that's a, the I'm, I'm a bit of an architecture fan. All right, I, I love that. That's amazing. Sorry. Go no, something there. something you you might want to know is um, Michael Portillo actually put a brick into there. When they were redoing it all, so there you go. He was doing suddenly, the train journey stuff. Suddenly, it's all gone down here. There you go. That's your um, architecture screwed. Okay, that's that plan gone. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, the women's institute came in, and and they just brought the atmosphere down with their steely gaze. Oh. And because um, it happens, you know, sometimes the show's not for you, and it's not, you know, it, it can happen. Yeah. And uh, they're wrong, of course. And um, <laughs> at the end of it, there was this sort of smattering of applause, and then this one lady just put her hand up to it. Will you be taking questions? And uh, I was really, yeah, she said, so after retail, what do you do for a living now? And I, I sort of stood there in front of, you know, in this, this room in Edinburgh, sort of going, well, I'm doing this. And this is just, oh. And she sort of said, oh, in a way that questioned how I was feeding my daughter. Do you know what I mean? It was that, it was that kind of fun. So there's been some interesting crowds. Yeah. Uh, but on the whole, they've been very, very lovely. Okay. Yeah, be good. It's yeah, it's, it's been selling. People have come, because I'm in a paid venue first time this year. And um, people have paid money to come and see me, and that's you can't ask for a bigger honour than that, really. Yeah. It's people to trust you to actually hand over cash, um, which is great. Why not? Absolutely. Yeah, it's why not indeed. Um, now you've, you're doing two shows. Has this been because I've known you for a few years, but you were you were coming to the French before I knew you. Obviously. Yeah. Has this been an ongoing thing? You've done two shows per year, or? Um, well, I always did ten films because ten films just proved to be because I, I did. I, the first fringe I came to was in 2010, mm -hmm. and I was doing uh, just nine days, and I did uh, a split bill with two other comics, uh, Sam Savage and a lady called Jack Bales, who's, who's no longer doing comedy, and we were in a place that was virtually in Belgium, 
right. Uh, honestly, you could get the Eurostar to our venue. Really? Uh, oh, it was miles away. And, but it was fun. And then I, I was, because I'm a bit, a bit, a bit more mature than the average performer in Edinburgh. And um, I, I sort of decided to come back and do a show. And so I did 10 films, and it went really well uh, for where it was, you know, did okay. It's a squeaky noise, Yeah, it's, it's there. something squeaking, yeah, it's got a big mouse in the back, but it's not it. Cool. Um, as long as it hasn't got a show to promote, I'm fine. <laughs> um, the most trap. Yeah, but... Hey, hey, hey. Um, um, <laughs> this, is why I'm, this is why I'm not... This is why I don't do what you do. <laughs> Thank the Lord. And died a um, bloody day. Anyway, <laughs> the, um, yeah, but that went... It went really well, and then but I got a review. I got a review from the Scotsman in the last day, mm-hmm. um, and then someone said, "Well, you've got that review. You should bring it back." So I did, and it just kept bringing it back because it just got more popular and popular, and it made you know people were coming and paying money to see it uh, in the bucket at the end, and I yeah. was making quite a bit of money, which was lovely. And so I was able to finance it, and then it became. I think I was about the sort of the third year. I said, "Well, I can't just do ten films. I've got to do something else." Mm-hmm. So I started doing another show as well. Um, and the first one I did was called Aiden Gobi is on the Mend right. uh, which is uh, mental health that no one came to uh, virtually no one came really? to yeah you, you put mental health in the title and people people just are very wary of it um, so you kind of got to it was a lesson learned people came but not a huge amount of people <laughs> but you kind of have to um, pitch the show right you know you, there's so many different shows so you've got to get the title right and you've got to be able to lure people in with something that you know and then you can talk about the things you want to talk about yeah um, but yeah so I, and then I just started doing 10 films in another show and then last year I, I sort of had enough of 10 films because even the brickwork knew all the words um, so from there and, yeah so two shows it seemed logical yeah. yeah next year I'm only doing one all right oh god yeah I can't all be right. doing this again I'm too tired so what's the plan for next year, or, 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 or do you know? What I've, got a, I've got, I've got some lucrative. I've got some potential titles. All right, that been, okay. That have come up. Yeah. Um, I've got um, vote goat, which, um, uh, given given the, the the current political situation, might be quite interesting. Mm-hmm. But that might be from when I the idea the idea I have is is one about maybe running for election. Right. Um, because when I when I was at university, I um, I ran for election at the student to be a student president and I had no campaign at all um, all I had was um, a poster I got a guy a friend of mine to uh, superimpose my face over the uh, Austin Powers poster right and it, the, the, the only thing I had no policies or anything and all it was was this poster that just said vote goat baby yeah <laughs> and um, I won so I won that by a landslide yeah. and <laughs> I, I just have this idea of possibly recreating it because of how awful politics is at the moment mm. and doing the same having no policies and seeing what happens yeah I thought of that the other one uh, the other title is uh, whatever floats your goat right which Why? I have no idea it's just the title just the yeah. and yeah. then the other one I have an idea is um, Aiden Goatley Alpha Dog oh. um, just okay. because of um Macho stuff, right? And, yeah, because obviously I'm incredibly butch. Obviously, obviously. But you know, who knows? Who knows what it will be? Hmm. I don't know. We'll find out. Brilliant. Something will pop in my head. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So now, do you want to retail? I mean, the, you know, the joys of retail. It's not just a, a title for show. I'm, I'm wanting to know what I'm speaking as I'm going to end up going back there and hunting something. Um, it could be a bottle. There's a bottle in here, is it? It could well be, but don't say that, it's been there for ages. Oh. But anyway, back to the chat, sorry, it's yep. a bit of a domestic. Um, you did actually work in retail. Yes. And during the joys of retail, you t- you know, you go through some of the, the stuff the stuff yeah. that happened. Um, it, was retail that bad for you? <laughs> well, retail management. Yeah. Because it's, it's more about the man- There's, I found that there's a very alpha, macho kind of attitude. And business is business, and it's horrible. Um, and I think that I had this sort of dream that this isn't funny, but this is why I believe that if if you create an atmosphere which is friendly and happy, and the team are friendly and happy, then customers will come in and pick up on that, mm-hmm. and they'll go, oh, "This is a nice atmosphere in here." And it doesn't matter where you are; you could be in any kind of shop. It's the same deal. The atmosphere. You can walk into a store and you can feel it. You walk into some stores and you just sort of walk around and for some reason you just think, oh, I don't like it. You know, people are dicks, they're just rude, you know, they don't care. So if they don't care, why should I care, you know? Um, but I, I often get accused of being too nice uh, for being retail manager. Um, you know, got to be harder. And um, it's very tough. Yeah. And obviously there's a lot of business 
pressures and there's a lot of pressures to perform and it's it's been horrible. <laughs> it's been bits yeah, yeah. really bad. The kind of facts and the, you know the figures and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. I see. I am I'm, I'm I've never been that kind of a person for you know facts and figures. Oh uh, like yeah. That. I mean me neither. I cr really I've just bluffed it. Really. Yeah. I stumbled into it by complete accident. I just got offered a job to run a garden centre by a guy who was told that he should hire me. And all of a sudden I was in charge of a garden centre. I, I mean, I don't know anything about plants, I still don't. Yeah. As far as I'm concerned, if they're green, they're okay. <laughs> they're green, they're going to go in your salad. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, if you're feeling a bit camp. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, have I said that? That's all right. It's like, phew, yeah. Um, vegetables. <laughs> yes. Um, um, so yeah, it just sort of happened and suddenly I was in charge of all these stuff and whatever. But yeah, there's a lot of bullies and a lot of... There's some lovely people too, don't get me wrong, mm. um, but they're, 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 they're few and far between. Yeah, I've always found if you, if you go, you're right, if you go into a shop and there's a good atmosphere and it's, you know, it's friendly and whatever else, then you know you get you get better out of your people. You know, you yeah, do get yeah. Out of people. and even if it's a big chain shop or some massive thing, you know, you can feel the difference if the, if the customers, you know, you're prepared to help the customer. Yeah. So fringe wise, yes, um, more happier stuff. Well, it's more happier stuff. Yeah, it's getting battered by flyers. Um, uh, yeah. What's been your best moment? And all the years that you've done the fringe, what's been the the best thing that's happened to you? Apart from obviously meeting me. Oh God, there's there's been apart from meeting you, obviously. Obviously. <laughs> um, there's been there's well, oh, crikey, there's been a few. Um, the one that just popped in my head was in the first year, I compared a gig in the Counting House Big Room, mm -hmm. which is like a 150 seater, but I compared it to eight people, and it was lovely. It was one of my favourite gigs. Yeah. Oh, it was brilliant. And there was a, you know, there was a, there was a kid there that was dumped there by her sister because her you know, sister was at university, said, "I'll go and see a show." And it was just, we had a lot of fun with all of everyone there. And I got her to stand on the stage and pretend to be doing a microphone. And we took a photo of her on the camera just so that she could go, look, well, this is what I've been doing. Well, you dumped me. I've done some stand up. Yeah. And it was just lovely. I mean, it was really nice. <laughs> and and it's, it, there's, there's always a fringe moment, yeah. you know, something that happens. And, and it's just been great. There was, um, when I did the 150th uh, 10 films with my dad, which was the 2014's last show. Mm -hmm. That was that was a bit of an emotional roller coaster. That was that was incredible. Mm -hmm. um, just because it was, I think, well over 150 people crammed into that room. I had people yeah. on the stage mm -hmm. and everything, yeah. and it was just amazing. Right. Um, that was good. Yeah. And then you know you get to meet your heroes. Um, I met Mark Thomas here, who I'm a massive fan of, mm -hmm. um, and I've met I've met so many lovely people. Um, Thanks. <laughs> but no, I, I, you know, you do. You just get to meet meet an incredible range of people, and give me audiences. Mm. And I have to say, the, the the audiences are lovely. You know, they, they they come for a show. People want to be entertained, and if you can give them a show and they love it, and they come back, yeah. which which is just amazing. And I'm always deeply, deeply amazed and touched that someone will come back and go, oh, go and see Aidan Goatley. It, 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 you know, you can't ask for anything better than that. Really. Mm. But. Um, yeah, but I think it shows it, it shows that you do put on a good show when when you have people coming. You have repeat offenders. Um, yes, coming back time after time. Yeah, yeah, bless um, yeah, yeah. It, it's just lovely, you know. And um, but it's it's a real honour to do it and have an opportunity. Um, but yeah, there's there's so many great moments that happen. But yeah, it is it all blends into one. Most of it, but some of it's really good. Yeah, stuff. But I mean, the thing is that for 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 those of you that don't know, um, I was kind of set up by this man. I didn't set you um, up, yeah, I just introduced well, you. Did. you. No, no, you, no, you set on. me up, you finally set me up. James Friedman did a show called Man of Steel, right? I introduced you because I thought it was a show that you should go and see, right? I didn't realise that James, being the sneaky thief that he is, would actually just do you straight away. Totally. Amazing. Because I just introduced you in the lobby, didn't I? Yes. And then with those seconds later, you went and did the show and he got you. Yeah, he, he took my wallet, he uh, cloned my... You should explain, his show is that he's a thief, he's a professional yes, thief. Yes, a professional thief. So, yeah. he, um, he cloned my um, debit card, he managed to get basically steal my identity and yeah. make up a Facebook page, a Twitter page, um, a passport, 
um, and various other things. I mean, yeah. it, it was it was actually quite scary how easily it was done. Do, yeah. And do you know? And I hope you're watching this, James. Do you know every time I go to the cash line? <laughs> True story, every time, Kerry will tell you, every time I go to the cash machine, and yeah. if Kerry's with me, and it's, if it's her that's using it, I always say, get that check, get the keypad checked, get everything checked, yeah, yeah, yeah. to make yeah. sure that there's nothing, and that's what you should do, you should always check, when you've got a cash machine, the, the keypad, legit, and yeah. everywhere, you check everything, and make sure everything's legit before you put your card in, yeah. and that was a tip I got from James, and I still use that. There we go. So, but thanks for setting me up. Fuck's sake. I didn't say that. Yeah, you did. I, now, I, I reckon you went, and you went, Look, he's a bit of a dick. Go and do him. Okay, well, I'll tell you what. If you want to be set up for something fun, go and see the Cagouls. Okay. Oh, trust me, you will love it. Take the kids. It is such a good show. What time's it on it? 5.15. Better mm, push, because the kids... Th that's the thing. The kids go back to school oh. this week, which is just... A shame. Mm, yeah. Halfway through the flipping... Well, you know, take them out of school. Trust me, take them out of school a bit early. We'd done that earlier on in the year to go to France. So. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get our own. Cool. Um, but the cagouls, they're on at the caves at 5.15 mm. and it's its a delight for any age. Yeah. You will laugh your conquers off. It's silliness mm -hmm. and just lovely, lovely. It's just done to perfection. Right. It's really so, good. So, anyway. Yes, anyway. Well, we'll get back to you, get back to you. Yes. Um, the Mr. Blue Sky has been doing tremendously well. Yes. Um, yeah, they both have. The both shows yeah. Really well. but yeah, Mr. Blue Sky's done right. I did it in, um, I, I, I did an early showing of it in Dubai. Um, which was incredible to go over there and do that. And then I got booked to go and do, it, uh, do a show in Istanbul. So I did two shows in Istanbul. How does that happen then? And I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm being no, serious. No, how no, do, how no. does that actually? Cause it's like Abby Roberts with um, her show. Yeah. Um, she, she was invited to go to Moscow and do her show yeah. in Russian, and she went. And I was like, how? Do, you know? And it just so happened there was some some guy who owned a club and from Moscow. And same, seen her show. Yeah, same same thing. With, same thing with with Eastern Buller, Fantastic promoter, lovely, lovely, uh, brilliant comic as well, uh, Asli Akma. And they, she she basically invited me because I was over, when I was over in Dubai. I think she saw that I was in Dubai, and therefore, I mean, if you can if you can do a gig in Dubai and survive, um, because it's, you know it's expats and there's a mixture of people there, then then you know you, you can pretty much adapt your stuff. So she thought. I think she realised it wasn't a risk. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, she she asked me to come and do it. And we sort of trying to get diaries to work and, and things like that. And eventually it worked and I ended up doing the two nights. I did a, a night at the um, uh, Hard Rock Cafe in Istanbul, which was pretty rock and roll. Yeah. Uh, that was cool. And then the next night was in a in the, on the Asian side, because right. obviously you know, Turkey's got the Bosphorus in the middle and there's yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's split between two continents. Right. Um, so you've got the European continent and the Asian continent, and Istanbul slap bang over the middle of it. <laughs> so I did one, I did one night in in Europe, and then one night in Asia. Nice. Just fucking awesome. That's that's that is pretty fucking that's pretty cool. amazing. Um, but yeah, that was incredible. And it, it's just amazing. It's a privilege to go. It's a privilege someone to trust you to go and do it, but you get to see some amazing things. Yeah. Because um, I mean, you you we were. We were chatting away today on, on the radio you say you, you know you've got a love of doing radio yeah um now there's there's been over the past wee while there's been lots of ad, adverts for english speaking radio presenters for dubai really but i'm not allowed to go true story why are you not allowed to go because kerry won't relocate oh, with the kids so. that's okay yeah, <laughs> it's it's a weird place. It, it's a, it's a, it's a fascinating place, mm -hmm. but there's nothing there. It, it's it's I, I, both times I've been there. It's, it's an interesting place to go to, but it's basically there, there's about fifty two shopping centres per person. It's a big shopping right. centre with a lot of air conditioning, mm -hmm. and um, it's it's fascinating to go to. But obviously, there's just all the wow. There's a, someone cycling with a load of rhubarb stuck out the side. I love this town. Uh, um, is it Morrissey? <laughs> it was Morrissey, possibly, Morrissey. yes. Um, yes. And, uh, not looking well. No. no. And, um... No meat, you see. Yeah. There's one one amazing bit, which is the old town where the river is. Mm -hmm. There's the, the, the brook there, but... Yeah, it's, it's all, it's all, you know, it's desert, desert, desert. Buildings. It's, it's a is fascinating... It yeah, no, absolutely. It's a fascinating place. It's really different culture. Amazingly different. But, 
it, yeah. It, it's a weird place. Yeah, yeah. I wouldn't move out of there. No? Yeah. All right. Did you go to the Palm, is it the Palm Hotel? What, you know, the no, big massive hotel? No, I, I saw it in the distance. Yeah. Um, but I wasn't impressed because it's just a rip off of the, uh, the Spinnaker Tower in Portsmouth. Ah, oh, right, okay. So it's exactly the same. Fair so, enough. And basically, if you go on a sunny day in Portsmouth, it's virtually the same. Mm. Funny because we were there, we got the, um, the ferry from Le Havre to Portsmouth a yeah. couple of years ago. So I know exactly the tower you're yeah. talking about. Yeah, yeah. Which yeah. is now sponsored by Emirates. It's now the Emirates Tower in, is that in Portsmouth. Right? Yeah. So even even they know about it. So fine. Fabulous. Um, so your shows to the, uh, you're on tonight. As, yeah. as, as, as we're speaking here, um, 7.35 with the joys of retail, 10.15 for Mr. Blue Sky, the sweet yeah. venues at the Apex Hotel in the Grass Market. Yeah. Tickets are available. Go, go yeah. and see, go and see, by the way. Go and see. Because right. it's fabulous. Um, and it's always, do you know what, it's always, it's always good when the festival comes along because I know people like yourself are coming. Yeah. And I, I, I do try and get up to see yourself and, and some others who have, have gave me their time Oh, um, well, to, to get any chat and stuff. So, um, but um, we'll pull over here. And, Fair enough. I'll jump out here. Then. And um, Aidan Goley, do you know what? It's been an absolute pleasure. It's, thank it's you. A, it's a, honestly, thank you, sir. It's no a problem. pleasure as always. No problem. I mean, when I obviously got when, when I got in the car and yep. there was a strange man offering me sweeties, I I really didn't know what would happen in the end. He's alive. Yeah. So. But okay. yes, thank you very much. And that's been another uh, friend ride along. So. Bye now.